<laughs> hey guys that are just joining in i had something playing on youtube and it wouldn't shut off when i went live on here we're talking about this so i was just i've been working on sebastian rogers most of the day you know looking at his looking at certain things um you know we had new information but i didn't really touch too much on them today this is veronica butler and jillian kelly and they went missing between kansas and oklahoma when they were going to collect uh, Veronica's kids to take them to a birthday party. Well, listen to this. We've got somebody that's out there with boots on the ground searching for these. We have some beautiful ladies. Yes, ladies are out there right now uh, with boots on the ground searching for the women in Kansas. Rock Chalk on YouTube right here. Not very many followers that I, I'm working on. I'm going to get that up because, uh, you know, God bless anybody that's willing to take their time, energy, and, and passion and go out there and, and help a perfect stranger they know nothing about just because they're missing and, and, and they need help. And so this group of women, and I, I, there was a few men out there that I saw actually are taking it upon themselves to kind of, uh, to, to, to search. And so they've been in contact with law enforcement out there. They've been having a great communication with them. So I've got some finally, 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 some real information that I can give you about the case. If those that are just coming in and you're wondering what I'm talking about, I'm talking about Jillian Kelly and Veronica Butler, two women that went to go pick up children from Kansas, or excuse me, from Kansas, they went to Oklahoma to pick up some children and their car was abandoned on the side of the road. When I first started talking about this, we've got a lot of you know, interesting information that concerned us greatly. One was that the car windows may have been busted out and there may have been blood um, around the vehicle. And right now we're learning that no, there were no busted out windows. And so there's some, there's some confusion here because one witness says that the door was left open and another witness says the door was closed. There's something going on out there where it may even be that this car was moved. Um, there's a lot of stuff that they're searching for right now. They're getting the information out. They're being very scant with the uh, information that they're disclosing. So I'm relying on these beautiful ladies with the shoe leather work that they're doing to find um, Jillian as well as Veronica. And so this is what I've learned. I've learned there was the, 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 even though there was no busted windows, there was two things that I said, busted windows, and I heard that there was some blood somewhere in or around the car. And it's, it's with sad news that that is correct. Although there was no busted windows, apparently there was a blood-like um, substance um, found on location near the car. And so that is what's causing the great concern for law enforcement and everybody else. And so I wanted to come here and let you guys know what we're finding out. And I wanted to, you know, also give a plug because... You know, I always want to advocate when people are out there doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do, you know, and we're trying to get as much information and we have very limited information. We rely on these boots on the ground, social media creators to feed us back information. And so this is Rock Chalk. I, I, I didn't realize that they were on the ground there. I didn't know who they were. But they're there, they're sweet people, they're, they're out there to do the right thing, to report back, to get us the information, because nobody's really reporting on these beautiful ladies. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's becoming a grave issue here. There's a lot of information coming on, coming about the in-law side of the family, and a lot of fingers are being pointed. So I just wanted to give you guys the information. We are learning, and there are, are I, I'm telling you right now, we're learning other disturbing details. I'm just not prepared right now to provide to my audience. I would like a little more information. Um, but again, uh, we do have a Facebook group. It's Finding Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly Discussion Group on Facebook. Uh, we also have them with boots on the ground. So you're going to be getting around the clock. If you're this is a case that you're interested in uh, related to Veronica Butler and Jillian um, Kelly, you're going to want to sign up for that um, YouTube page and also that Facebook group so we can keep you guys up to date. And of course, as information comes available and I become aware of it, I will be bringing it to you live here. Um, but that's where we are right now. It's not looking good. The girls still have not been found and nobody 
has been arrested at this time in connection with their disappearance. So as soon as I have any more information for you, I will, I will report back. Is the bio dad in rehab? Uh, I have confirmed from a family member that the bio dad has been in rehab and has been in rehab since the 22nd of, of uh, March. So the bio dad would not have been out of rehab at the time this happened. He wouldn't be there. So uh, he wouldn't physically be present. I would um, uh, say it in those terms. So he's not, if anybody's thinking he physically was there, he was not physically there. He was definitely under supervision um, and he can't have phone calls. My understanding is he's not allowed to have any outside contact with people to boot. So if he went in there on 322nd, I think the, the, the earliest he would have been able to make his first phone call would be right around April 22nd or April 23rd. So I'm sure that he knows what happened now because this is what this is an investigation that it is. Uh, but it, under any normal circumstances, he wouldn't be able to have communication without at, with the outside world for at least 30 days. What happened? Can you please recap? Thanks. Sure. Um, so what had happened is, as you know, these two girls last Saturday embarked on a trip from um, Hugoton, Kansas, over to Eva, Oklahoma, to to pick up Veronica's children to take them to the birthday party. Now, I'm unclear how this other pastor got involved, but I heard a pastor reached out to Jillian's husband to let, let him know that she never made it. And Jillian's husband, Heath, and Veronica's fiance, which I don't know what his name is, and I, I'll, I'll figure it out, um, got in their vehicle and took the path that they drove to see if maybe they had car problems or something like that. And that's when they came across their car. Now, again, there's some, there's some, um, some people saying that they passed the car with the door open. Some people said they passed the dark car with the door closed. Some people believe the car was parked in a different spot uh, and may have been moved as well. So I'm unsure about those finite details and I don't wanna get into them because I don't know. Um, but it, it right now we have confirmed that there was no broken windows in the car, which I was unsure whether they were broken or not. We just heard rumors that they were broken and that there was a, 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 an appearance of blood at the scene. So even though the windows weren't busted, it does appear that the blood at the scene does hold water. We are hearing, and uh, it sounds like law enforcement confirmed to this group that has boots on the ground, uh, that there was blood-like substance found, and they actually confirmed with them that it was, in fact, blood that was found at the scene. So that has not been made public, but it was law enforcement that told this creator on a live broadcast, therefore it is kind of public. Um, so we've got that information. What else do we have? And the other information the law enforcement told her is that he confirmed that nobody has been arrested at this time in connection with their disappearance. So that really is all the information we do have about this case. There's not a whole lot here. I heard that the baby's daddy was released the day before this happened. Um, I'm getting conflicting stories because I'm getting information from his family and, you know, they could just, I don't know. His grandmother, his grandmother is adamant that he is in rehab. He went into rehab on March 22nd and he, he's, he has to be there for 30 days, no contact before he can even have one single outing or even the first phone call. So I don't know, but that's just the information. His great, now his grandma could be you know she they could have her believing that he's in rehab I don't know that's just what she said so either way you look at it these women are in danger obviously and they have not been found and it's tomorrow will be seven days and so this is really becoming something that's um, very concerning and we got some beautiful ladies out there right now searching for these beautiful ladies and I just think it just gives me goosebumps um, to see a community come together and, and seeing, you know, women, because, you know, people have to work, there's things going on, but people that have time, even women, are going out there and getting in those woods and, and searching for these beautiful ladies. And I just, it just makes my heart happy. It really does. It makes my heart happy that strangers do this for other people. So um, just get over there if you can um, and sub up this channel if you're on um 
YouTube, again, they're doing live broadcasts right from the scenes. They're giving us up-to-date information. The lady that's running this channel, this is a small community, so she knows her sheriff. So she's able to get information directly from him. So she's actually reporting the news as it is. She's not adding anything in. And I know there's a lot of people that have been very concerned about these two ladies that are watching and praying and praying that they come home safely. And, and when we get an opportunity to have eyeballs on the ground, I'm going to let everybody know we have eyeballs on the ground, and this is the eyeballs we have on the ground right now. So please go over there. If you're on YouTube, sub them up. I believe they're still rolling right now and still a live stream right now if you'd like to go over and check it out. But guys, I'm going to call it a night. You guys have an amazing day. God bless each and every one of you, and we will see you first thing tomorrow morning.